We're proud to present all the way from the sunny shores of California, the James Dean of Jazz, the Prince of Cool. And he's here playing a double bill with our very own Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie. Making his Birdland debut, Chet Baker and his quartet. Hello, fear. Hello, death. Hello, death. All right, folks, that's a wrap. I could have played myself, Chet. You're not an actor. Neither are you. Well, that's true. <laughs> it opens with the idea of Chet Baker acting in a movie about his own life, which he had been, uh, Dino De Laurentiis had approached him to act in. And, and I found that so intriguing because if, you, if I could show Chet Baker acting, it, it would have a different meta meaning, which is that you would see how fraudulent the whole idea of a biopic was. And then maybe you could get at some kind of, uh, just tell a good story yeah. um, and use this, the legend and myth of the jazz of this era and of Chet Baker himself to tell a, a love story that might be interesting to other people. You know, he could be accused like Eminem or Elvis Presley of appropriating, you know, uh, uh, black music and black culture. Um, I think that society did that. It's my opinion is that I think he just loved it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he wasn't... When you listen to this guy talk about Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and what that music meant to him, Dizzy Gillespie, I mean, it just means the world to him. Um, and unfortunately, the culture is such that he started selling records and Downbeat Magazine named him Trumpeter of the Year. And yeah. the story I love is he apparently kind of indicated to Miles Davis, you know, that he, when he won Trumpeter of the Year, he wanted to write Miles an yeah. apology letter. And Miles said, there's 20 brothers you should apologize to before you even get to me. My funny Valentine. But I think that I thought that unlike Billie Holiday or unlike Ella Fitzgerald or other great jazz vocalists, Chet wasn't known to have a great voice. He communicated something. I mean, and I thought that what he was communicating was actable, that I didn't need to have a great voice, that what's moving about Chet Baker singing is he sometimes don't think he will live through the song, mm -hmm. that his shyness or his, uh, there's something so detached that you feel like you might just stop singing any second. That's it, you feel like you're uh, privy to a to a secret mm -hmm. when he sings. And I thought, you know, that is that I could do. Yeah. You don't have to have a great voice to do that. Um, so I just I started now as I studied with the music teacher. You know, as I studied his trumpet playing and his singing, I came to admire it a lot more. You realize how hard it is to be that simple. Mm -hmm.